How's it going? Um, as y'all seen, Seventh Day Slumber, they're going to be here uh, next Sunday. That'd be, yeah. Are y'all excited about that? I, I'm extremely excited about that because I just want to let y'all know that it's more than just music. That it's going to be a time of ministry and lives will be changed that night. And if you haven't purchased your tickets, see Sam see uh, Brian Taylor or go to the blueroom.co and purchase them because we're almost sold out. So y'all need to like go today and get them. I'm joking. We're not almost sold out. It's worth a shot, right? I used to sell cars. I'm sorry. Um, I want to be gracious host today and I just want to give it up for Ilya. They're, uh, they're not just a band either. They, uh, they want to help change the world for Jesus. And it's an amazing thing they're doing. On their booth back there, they have a uh, spiral, and you can write your prayer request in it, and they take it on the road with them, and they just pray over it and pray over it and pray over it and pray over it. And so it's, it's truly amazing. Today, uh, we're in the series Dream to Destiny. And um, the series is about Joseph in the book of Genesis. And I want to give you some similarities of Joseph, the story of Joseph, and Jesus in the New Testament. So um, one of the similarities is the Bible records no sin for either Jesus or Joseph. Um, Another one is uh, Joseph was betrayed by his brother Judah. And Jesus was betrayed by Judas. And Judah actually translates into uh, Judas. Joseph was sold for 20 shekels, then later for 30. Because uh, when he was was in the pit and his brothers sold him, they sold him for 20. And then when he went to Egypt and they sold him again there, the going rate for a slave was 30 shekels. And Jesus was betrayed for 30 shekels. Um, Joseph, he went on to save the world from famine. And uh, Jesus saved the world, and he is our king today. Amen. It's great. See, the, the Old Testament, you got to read it. The New Testament, you got to read it. It all points to Jesus. Everything in that awesome book points to Jesus. And I know some of those stories in the old, that Old Testament, man, they just go on and on and on. But I promise you, read it. It'll change your life. All right. Um, So we're in the the series Dream to Destiny. We got to uh, uh, the pride. The first test was the pride test that we went through. And and throughout this series, um, everything that we talk about will be a test. And the first one was the pride test. And Joseph shared his dream. And what did Todd say? All in. If you want to get rid of pride, just say, all in. I'm all in, Jesus. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. I'm all in, church. You know, just, I'm all in. The pit test. Todd said for the pit test, he said that if you're in the pit, you say, I will fully depend on God to get me out of this. I'm going to cry out to God to get me out of this because it's the only way out. And the uh, test that we talked about last week was the palace test. And presence of God is prosperity. Does anybody in here ever listen to uh, T.D. Jakes? Anybody ever watch T.D. Jakes? Yeah? Man, he's an amazing preacher. Just He preaches the word like I've never seen before. T.D. Jakes gets a bad rap, though. People say that all he cares about his prosperity because he has a, you know, he has a big church. Well, that's not true. And they say all he cares about is cars and money. That's not true either. And T.D. Jakes, he doesn't really need my help, but I'm going to go ahead and help him anyways, okay? 
I heard a sermon that he did, and it's, uh, it's talking about the presence of God. And he said, the presence of God is prosperity. It's not about the cars. It's not about the money. It's about the presence of God in your life. And I, I, I thought that was truly amazing. Um, all right, well, we're at the prison test. So if you would, turn your Bibles to Genesis 39. We're going to start in chapter 13. Uh, Genesis 39, we're going to start in verse 13, I'm sorry. And what we have going on here is Joseph was sold to uh, Potiphar. Uh, Joseph's at Potiphar's house. And man, Joseph was a striking fellow. I mean, he was a good looking guy. And what happened was is Potiphar's wife accused him of rape. And so that threw him in prison. And so let's pick up here in, in uh Verse 13, it says, When she saw that she was holding his cloak and had fled, she called out to her servants. Soon all the men came running. Look, she said, my husband has brought this Hebrew slave here to make fools of us. He came into my room and to rape me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream, he ran outside and got away, but he left his cloak behind with me. That coat has caused Joseph more trouble. If I... If I if I was Joseph, I wouldn't put another coat on. I mean, I wouldn't. When he was, uh, when he was in a, a, the pit, his brothers took his coat and gave it to, uh, to his father. They tore it up, put blood on it, gave it to his father. And now uh, Potiphar's wife took his coat as well. Verse 16 says, She kept the cloak with her until her husband came home. And then she told him her story. That Hebrew slave you've brought into our house tried to come in and fool around with me, she said. But when I screamed, he ran outside, leaving his cloak with me. Potiphar was furious. When he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her, so he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. This is important. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything the Lord was. The Lord was with him and caused every, everything he did to succeed. Now, when I read stuff like that, I, have to, I always have questions. And my question is, why did Joseph go to prison? I mean, why did he go? The Lord was with him. The Bible says that he never sinned. So why did he go to prison? Well, of course he was wrongly accused, right? And the thing that this test is all about, this prison test, is it's about perseverance, and it's about trials and tribulations. And it's about building character in your life. And I think if you'll turn your Bibles to Romans chapter, chapter 5, verse 3, we're going to find a formula in this verse that tells why Joseph went to prison. It's not because he did anything wrong. Verse 3 says, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. How do you glory in tribulations? I mean, seriously, how do you glory in tribulations? Tribulations are, uh, are tough times. Uh, tribulation means a uh, state of great suffering. So how can you glory in that? But I promise you, if you're wrongly accused and the Lord's presence is with you, you can glory in tribulations. It says... Uh, I'm going to start over. It says, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So, the first thing I want to talk to you all about is trials and tribulations. And, like I said, trials and tribulations mean a state grade of suffering. 
and it's going to happen. You can't run from it, okay? It's going to happen. But in John 16, it says, I have told you, and this is Jesus talking, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because, because I have overcome the world. Isn't that awesome? Jesus, that's so comforting. Because you're going to go through trials, you're going to go through tribulations. But Jesus overcome the world. And he didn't overcome the world for something that's going to happen to us in the future. He overcome the world so that we can live here today. So that we can live in prosperity. Um, James uh, 1 Verse 2 and 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. See, the reason Joseph went to prison is because God was trying to build perseverance in his life, because God put a dream in Joseph and Joseph, and God had a destiny for Joseph, but Joseph had to walk it out for him to get there. Trials, there's a difference between trials and tribulations, okay? Trials produce patience, and we all need patience. And, man, I got a great story about patience. Some, yeah. <laughs> Some will share it with you. Sorry, Sam. All y'all know... Uh, because of social networking, it's a fantastic tool, that uh, I won a free Grand Slam a week for a year at Denny's. Yes. Has anybody ate at the new Denny's here in Canton? Yeah? Okay. Well, let me tell you the story how this happened. The staff were, were in there, we're eating, and uh, before I get into this, Sam, we have an awesome relationship. We're like brothers and sisters, you know? And so we just kind of pick at each other. But we, we all get done eating, and we go up to pay. And um, it's me, Howard, you know, and we're just standing there talking, and Sam just goes, Whew. She just cuts right in front of me so she could pay first. And she goes, ha-ha, I cut in front of you. <laughs> and I didn't think nothing of it. I just kept talking with Howard, you know. And uh, I didn't even know they were giving stuff away. And Sam paid. And her receipt printed off, and it said, oh, if you fill out this survey, you win a free Grand Slam. And she's like, woo, I cut in front of you. I want a free Grand Slam. Ah. Right? So I just patiently wait in line, <laughs> tapping my foot. I go up there, and I pay. And I pay, and I walk off, and the guy goes, Hey, sir, come back here. So I turned around and I went back. And he said, you won a free Grand Slam a week for a year. <laughs> and I was like, man, that, that's incredible. And I, di I, didn't even, I didn't even put all this together to her in the car on the way home. And uh, Howard said, you know that uh, Sam cut in front of you. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. So when I get back here, man, we're rubbing it in. We're rubbing it. And then Howard said, Howard goes, you know, that was supposed to be my grand slam. <laughs> because you cut in front of me. I said, no, I didn't. And uh, the next day, or no, two days later, we went to eat there again. Howard won a free grand slam a week for a year. So, if you belong to our church, go eat at Denny's. <laughs> and then, I, this has nothing to do with the sermon, but I got to tell this because this is hilarious. My, uh, my mother-in-law, she's the general manager at Whataburger, and it opened up just, you know, Denny's opened up just down the street from Whataburger, and man, she's freaking out, okay? And she calls me because she's seen it on Facebook, and she says, Chris, what was it like in there? I, I saw you on you won a free Grand Slam a week for a year. What was it like? I said, Lisa, you should have seen it. I said, I paid my money and the receipt popped open. Confetti fell down from the ceiling. There were strobe lights going off. The place was packed. 
<laughs> she didn't like that very much. <laughs> she didn't like it at all. But, it, you know, it's all right. But uh, <laughs> trials produce patience. Because trials are typically not as long as tribulation. And uh, tribulation produces perseverance. And it's important when we're going through these trials and tribulations that we have the right foundation underneath us. I mean, I remember um, before I was a Christian and, you know, I didn't know God. I didn't know, know anything like, you know, anything about God. Didn't want to have anything to do with Him at all. And, uh, man, I would go through a, tr- a trial or tribulation and I had no foundation whatsoever. I mean, it was a foundation of the world. And, man, when I went through that trial and tribulation, my whole world just went bad. I had no, no foundation. I had nothing to... Uh, to to lift me up and to persevere through these trials and these tribulations. Um, It says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, anyone who listens to my teaching and and follows follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey, it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rain and flood, when the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. The right, having the right foundation that's built through Jesus Christ is key. Because if you can have that foundation that's built through Jesus Christ, He will lift you up out of any trial and tribulation that you're in. And it's very, very important. If, you're, if your foundation is of the world, I'm sorry, guys, but you can forget it. Because you'll always need more. You'll always need more. You'll always need more. The second thing we're going to talk about is perseverance. And perseverance, the definition of perseverance is steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success, continuance in a state of grace leading to a state of glory. Why was Joseph in prison? Because God was teaching him how to persevere. It says in Romans chapter 5, verse 3, remember, it says, tribulation produces perseverance. I can only think of one time since I've, well, I've probably been, more times since I've been a Christian, but I know for a fact, one time since I've been a Christian, God put me through something that, honestly, it wasn't really my fault. And he put me through this so I would be able to persevere because God has a destiny for my life and he's trying to build perseverance and character so that he can catapult me into the destiny that he has for me. And so he put me through this, uh, through this tribulation, through this trial, and what it was is uh, I first got into ministry, uh, first got a job here at church. And actually the first job I had here at church didn't have a whole lot to do with ministry. Um, Todd knew I was, uh, I, I used to be in management, so he asked if I would help run uh, the restaurant that we used to have called Sybil's. And I said, yeah, sure, man, I'll do it. And so I ran that for a little while and then got to know Todd and everybody. And then he said, he said yeah, I think you should come and be a pastor. And I was like, man, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about any of that, you know. But uh, what will I do? That's what I asked him. What will I do? He said, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But God told me you're supposed to be here, so come on. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. Well, I came on, and I had a paycheck. And it, you know, it, it wasn't a whole lot of a paycheck. But it was, it was good enough for us. And um, some things happened here at the church. And times got a little hard, and he came to me, and he said, Look, Chris, um, I know for a fact that you're supposed to be here at this church. He said, God told me, but he said, "Um, you know, we can't pay you. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, this is harsh. And if I was of the world, you know, if I would have been of the world back then, I would have been thinking the same thing. And it was the easiest conversation that I've ever had with anybody. And I said, you know what, that, that's fine, man. I, I, don't, I don't need a paycheck right now. I really did. But I told him, I don't, I don't need one. And he said, uh, 
He said, you know, you keep your office, keep, keep everything, keep doing it like you want to do. If you need to go out and get a job to su- support your family, you can do it. And then when you're off, you can come here. And he said, whatever you need to do. He said, that's fine. I said, hey, man, no problem. My foundation was good because God was showing me how to persevere through that time. Um, my background was, and I think I know why God did this to me. My background was all about money. I had to have money. I sold cars because I made a lot of money. I uh, was a, a general manager of a big retail golf chain because I wanted to make a lot of money. And God was showing me that it's not about the money. I went eight, six to eight months straight without a paycheck. And you now we had a family, I mean, I had a family, a daughter, you know, and my wife worked. Uh, she probably, I think she made minimum wage. And, and we just persevered, man, just persevered. And then he came to me and he said, he said, uh, you know, uh, you're doing a lot of work, man. I was vacuuming this place, just anything I could do. And he said, we, we want to start paying you. And I said, awesome, man, you know. So he started paying me some more money. Um, wasn't a lot. And I just kept persevering and persevering. I didn't go out and get another job because I knew God had me right here. And I was supposed to be here, that he was getting me ready for the destiny. And so, and now, you know, I'm where I'm at today because God showed me how to persevere through those times. And it's, uh, it's, truly, it's truly awesome when you can glory in your trials and tribulations. If you're producing good fruit, God is going to prune you. If you're not producing good fruit, He's going to cut you off. And I promise you, we don't, we don't want to be cut off. It's not good. John, uh, verse 15, uh, John chapter 15, verse 1 and 2 says, I am the true grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and He prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. If you bear good fruit, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. And it's okay. Because when you're going through that trial and tribulations, you can say, thank you so much, God, that I'm going through this right now because I know that you have a destiny for me. The third thing that we're going to get to today is character. And this is something that takes a long time. Uh, Character. Character. Um, remember Romans 5.3 says, Perseverance produces character. So, tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. And character means the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. When I was uh, working in the golf business, and I was the uh, general manager there, I had this older gentleman that, that uh, worked for me. And his name was Lou Diamond. <laughs> I know we had a lot of fun. His name was Lou Diamond. And he had the most amazing character qualities of anybody I've ever met. I mean, the guy just worked. And he was probably 60, 65, I don't know. And, he, man, he worked right beside us just as many hours as he could. He persevered through everything. He, his character was amazing. He always had a smile on his face. When, uh, I remember one time he got the flu, and Lou was like, you know what, I'm still coming to work. And I'm like, no, no, you're going to get us all sick. You know, and he's just smiling. You couldn't even tell. He might have been playing hooky. I don't know. No, I'm joking. But you couldn't even tell. But let me tell you what happened to Lou. Lou was uh, working for the, uh, the golf chain with me. Uh, I ended up getting out of the golf business, and I kind of kept up with Lou. And, man, he worked. He, ma- he, he worked and worked and worked and made his way all the way up to general manager where I was at. Because I, I believe it's because of his great character. And then the, the golf chain sold. And you know what happens when it sells. They come in, and... They wipe you out. They pretty much all the management they take and put somewhere else. Lou got fired for no reason. I guarantee you to this day there's still people that go into that store asking for Lou. But what happened was is Lou got fired 
and he went to another golf store down the street. They asked him if he would be their manager, works less hours, makes more money, and has more time to spend with his family. And it's because God produces character when you're going through trials and tribulations. Um, all right, I want to look to see what happened to, jo- to uh, Joseph. So let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 40. It says, uh, so the chief cupbearer, I'm in mean verse 9. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream first. But let me back up, let me, because if you haven't read the story, let me back up. So Joseph's in prison, and he has this amazing ability to, to, to share dreams, or to, to translate dreams. And he's in the prison, and, and this cupbearer and this baker are in there with him, and they were, they were uh, uh, servants to the Pharaoh, and they did something wrong, and so they threw, he, they threw him in prison. And so Joseph's fixing to interpret, interpret uh, this guy's dream. It says, So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream first. In my dream, he said, I saw a grapevine in front of me. The vine had three branches that began to bud and blossom. And soon it produces clusters of ripe grapes. I was holding Pharaoh's wine cup in my hand. So I took a cluster of grapes and squeezed the juice into the cup. Then I placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. He says, uh, this is what the dream means, Joseph said. The three branches represent three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up and restore you to your position as his chief cupbearer. And please remember me and do me a favor. When things go well for you, mention me to Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. Okay, when Joseph told, when Joseph interpreted that dream, it was an additional three years until he got out of prison. So the cupbearer, he didn't remember Joseph. Joseph said, remember me, right? Who gives, who gives the cupbearer those dreams? God. Who gives Joseph the power to interpret those dreams? God. Who gives the Pharaoh dreams? God. So let me ask you, why did it take three years? Because he wasn't ready. Joseph wasn't ready. Tribulations take a, take a while. And uh, God had Joseph in prison in order to produce perseverance, to produce character in his life, to show him how to persevere so that he can fulfill his destiny that God created for him. Three more years. I know... It's hard for us to understand why God does what He does in our lives, but I promise you that if, if you're in God's will and you're going through trial and tribulation, you can glory. You can say, thank you, God, that I'm going through this because I know you have a destiny for me. So, with all that said, I, uh, I had the Holy Spirit, man. He, he really spoke to me the other day, and it's, it's crazy how the Holy Spirit works. There was this uh, uh, gentleman, his name was Victor, and I was, at, uh, I was at my cousin's birthday party, and she's seven, and uh, I was sitting down, and I was talking to my good buddy, Brian Taylor, and this gentleman walked up, and he had a cane, and he was probably, I didn't get how old he was, I imagine he had to be 30, 35 at the latest, and he had this cane, and he was just struggling. And he sat down, he sat down, and when he sat down, I looked over at him, and God spoke to me right then. God said, you need to pray for him. I'm thinking, oh, man, this is going to get weird. Here we go. I imagine it's kind of like when Joseph told uh, the cupbearer, he translated his dream, Joseph's probably thinking, oh, man, another dream. That's what got me into this place to begin with. <laughs> but uh, so God spoke to him and he said, you need to pray for him. And I was, I was fighting it. 
I was thinking, man, I, I don't want to do that right now. You know, I don't know if he's a Christian. I don't know what these other people are going to think. My grandpa's there. He don't even go to church. You know, what, what's going to happen? And my uncle walked up to me 10 minutes later, maybe five minutes later, and he said, hey, I'm going to go over here and talk to this guy. Will you pray for him if he'll let you? And my eyes got that big, and I said, yeah, I should, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I looked at Brian, and I said, you're going with me. <laughs> so we, uh, where's Brian at? Brian Taylor. Can you come up here, man? So uh, you're coming with me. But it's amazing how the Holy Spirit works because not only did he tell me to pray for him, and God knew I was fighting it. And then he went to my uncle and told him, come pray for me. Come pray for him. And I got to, I, I got to meet this guy, uh, Victor. And like I said, he was about 30 to 35. And, and uh, he was telling me how he was in ministry uh, a long time ago and, and how he got out of ministry and, uh, you know, started doing some things that he shouldn't have or whatever. But here, here about two months ago, he got back into church. And, man, he was living for God. He was just doing what he was supposed to. You know, he was, he was in the will of God. And he, and, and he re-gave his life to Christ. And he was at his job. And he said his left side went numb. And he didn't know what was going on. And he said it's kind of kind of aggravating him a little bit, you know, but he, he still worked through the day. And then he said, but in the evening, he said, my left arm got numb. And then he said it was really freaking him out because, you know, on the left side, that's dangerous. And uh, he said, uh, he said, you know, I... I love God, and, and, and I told him, I said, man, I, I want to pr- pray for you. And um, he said, uh, yeah, man, let's do it. He said, but I got to tell you something first. And I said, what's that? And he said, listen, if God don't heal me, it's okay. He said, it doesn't matter, because I'm going to live for God no matter what. He didn't say it like this, but what he was telling me was God's got me through this tribulation, through this trial for a reason. And when he does decide to heal me, I'm ready for my destiny. That's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he said. And so we started to pray for him. And I don't know if he got healed. I don't know. I haven't seen him since. But the Holy Spirit told me to go pray for him for a reason because he knew that I was going to be talking to y'all today and that y'all needed to hear this. And so if God tells you to do something, do it. Don't be like me and fight it. Do it, okay? Now, for the last part of this message, it's going to get a little intense, but it's okay because... I have to ask you something, and I'm not condemning you whatsoever because I've been through a lot of the same things that you're going through. When I wasn't a Christian, man, I destroyed my life, okay? But I got to ask you, were you wrongly accused or were you rightly accused? Now think about it. Are you going through a trial and tribulation right now because you put yourself in it? Or... Are you going through a trial and tribulation right now because God has put you in it and He wants you to persevere and He wants you to build character? And it's easy. It's easy. All you have to do is step back for a second and look at your situation and say, am I in this situation because God wants me in this situation or am I in here because I put myself in it? And this is what you do. If you're in this situation that you're in because you put yourself in it, you need to ask God to forgive you and tell Him you're sorry and that you're going to live for Him no matter what. 
and He'll put, pull you out of that situation. And you can have life. Now, if you're in the situation because God put you in there, then persevere. Because it's going to get better, I promise. Because He has a destiny for you. And it's real easy to tell the reason you're in that situation. And if you're going through a divorce, if your tribulation is a divorce right now, well, guys, God didn't tell you to stay out till 2 in the morning with your buddies. Okay? God didn't tell you to cheat on your wife. God didn't tell you to argue with your wife every day or vice versa. And so you'll know if your finances are out of whack right now. You got to ask yourself, are you tithing? Because if you're not giving God what is His, He's going to get it one way or another. And I promise you, it ain't the way you want it. I mean, my, um, our, our finances, man, I, I struggle with finances. I'll be straight honest with you. I, I struggle with it. We tithe, but we still go through these trials and these tribulations. And I don't know why. And so I was asking God, why am I going through this right now? And you know what He said? You spend more than you make. That's what he said. He, look at your budget. Figure out what you can do. Don't live beyond those means. If you haven't changed your car insurance in the last five years, change it. We save 60 bucks a month. It's amazing. If, 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 your, if your cable is what's putting you under, get rid of it. God's trying to teach you something. Now, there was a time in my life that I was uh, rightfully accused. And before I was a Christian, a lot of y'all know I had three DWIs. I'm not supposed to be up here right now. I had three DWIs. When I was 19, I had one. When I was 25, I had one. And th- I'm sorry, when I was 19, I had one. When I was 23, I had one. And when I was 25, 24, do you remember? 21 and 24, something, okay, anyways, I had three, okay, and this is what I did, I wasn't, I wasn't coming to church at all, the first one, wasn't my fault, that's what I said, the second one, wasn't my fault, but there started to be this pattern in my life, and you can't always say it's not your fault forever, okay, and so I started to come, after I got the third one, I was like, you know what, I got to go to church or I got I to gotta figure something out because my life, the way it is, I'm not going to make it. And my wife, she uh, started coming to church here and I started, so I, I started to come. And when, and I still had this court case over, over my head. So what I did was, was I got down on my knees and I told Jesus, I am so sorry for the way I've been acting. I'm so sorry for all the people that I hurt in my life. I'm so sorry for the way that I treat my wife, for the way that I go out and get drunk and mistreat my family. I'm so sorry. Will you come into my life? Can I live for you now? Is what I asked him. And when I got up off that floor, I was a changed person. I was different. I loved church. That trial and tribulation that I went through extended years of trouble through DWIs. I mean, I I was always in court. I was always doing this. I was always doing something. And it was awful. But I told God, I didn't want to do that anymore. I'm done. And I still had that court case. And I went to the court case. I went to court and... The DA looked at me, and guys, you can get five to ten years for your third DWI. I got booked in as a felony, okay? I didn't have a lawyer. I didn't have anything. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. So I went. I stood in front of the DA, and he said, I can't find the other two. So I'm going to charge you with a misdemeanor. I paid $500, and I went home. Because I told God that I didn't want to live that way anymore. And not only did He lift me up spiritually, 
He lifted me up physically as well. He took care of my physical because I was going to live for Him spiritually because I repented. And I know repented is like a huge church word that's kind of icky, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. But it's not. Tell God you are sorry and that you love Him and that you're going to live for Him. And if you're going through a trial right now, a tribulation right now, that you didn't put yourself in, glory. Glory to you. Because God's getting re- you ready for your destiny. This is what I want to do. Um, I'd like the staff to, to come down front. Because this, this is serious stuff right here. Because we asked you to set in your, to, we asked you to repent. Okay? To tell God you're sorry. And I imagine as I've been talking that a, uh, a lot of you have, have had things come through your, your head and God spoke to you about something that, that's going on in your life right now that you need prayer for. And we want to pray for you. Ilya, you can come down too. Y'all like to pray. So we're going to take this time right here. Brian's going to strum a little bit on his uh, acoustic guitar and uh, we're going to pray for you y- y'all know that I have a um, y'all know that I have a one year old son right named Gavin do y'all realize what would happen to my life if I didn't repent if I didn't tell God I was sorry that I'd be in prison right now and that I would miss four years of my daughter's life and my son wouldn't even been born right now And that's heartbreaking because children are are a gift from God. Just come pray with us. We want to pray with you right now.
if y'all would uh, go ahead and stand up. I want to pray for us real quick so we can get out of here. And I know we got a lot to do today. I just, I thank y'all so much for coming. Um, if it's your first time here at church, uh, our senior pastor, he's, he's out and his wife are out. And so um, it was a little different today. It was great, man. Thank you so much, Ilya. Thank you so much. If y'all would, just bow your heads. Let me pray for us before we get out of here. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you so much and just thank you for this time that we got to come in here and worship and praise you. Thank you for Ilya for coming in and leading us in worship. Lord, it was an honor to have them here. Lord, I pray so much for, uh, for, for you to teach us perseverance, Lord, for, for you to teach us character. I glory in the trials and tribulations that I have because I know you're for us and I know you're not against us because you're a loving, gracious, wonderful God and that you want the best for us. I'm so thankful that you teach me lessons on a daily basis, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you for, for speaking to us today for the ones that, that came forward. Uh, Lord, I pray that if somebody is sitting in their seats and they didn't come forward, Lord, I pray that you convict them and so they, they'll be able to, to pray to you and repent and to get out whatever that was bothering them, Lord. Lord, 